we break our vow of silence. So yeah, we can't. This is the. This is no. So it's a silent Q and A. Yes, the silent Q and A. But those uh, are the best. Absolutely. No talk, only answers. <laughs> silence is the ultimate question, to which the ultimate answer is more silence. But um, I guess we can introduce ourselves. Hi, I am Connor. Um, my username here is Little Box, but my real name is Connor. I am the director and co-producer of Your Friend Logan. And, and that's that's about it. This, this guy here is with me. I don't I don't <laughs> I don't even know who you are. What are you I'm a guy. Here? Yeah, you've we've never met before, but I'm the producer of Lo Your Friend Logan. Um, nice to meet you, Connor. Nice, nice to meet you too. I I, I wasn't aware of this at all. Who what? Now, we've never met before, is that correct? All right, for my first trick, I will have you... Never mind. This is, uh, this is Matlock. Yes, Matlock Zemstake. Um, I did the producing part, and he, the Connor just code. I did do some code. But uh, Matlock, Matlock, you've, done, you, you've been involved with for a while. Yeah, ever since I met Logan, I've been involved in this documentary in some fashion or another. Yeah, absolutely. So you, you've, you've known him for as long as I've been alive. Longer, probably. Yeah, probably, actually, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah, so we are here to promote our fundraiser, our Indiegogo. Um, it's been going really, really well so far. I mean, like, and that's a huge thanks to you guys. It's it's very exciting to see everybody come out in full support for this. Um, so I figured it'd be nice to have like a little Q and A in here for you guys, um, just to kind of see like what questions you have, maybe regarding like either the fundraiser or the making of the documentary or really anything Logan related, because uh, we like talking about Logan a lot. I mean, I I don't, but. Yeah, Matt, Matt Lock, you don't have to say to. Yeah. I'm sick of talking about Logan. God, I've been talking about Logan ever since I met the guy. Absolutely. Uh, but, um, I'm looking through the chat right now and um, seeing if there's any actual questions. That we I can don't, answer. yeah, I, I'm not quite sure. Yeah, that goes. Yeah, so you can submit questions either in the chat or you can put your hand up and request to ask it in the call. So you can With send a, a request to speak. And then if you have a question, we can bring you in and you can ask a question. And I Absolutely. see we already have two, uh, so I'll go in order. Oh my God, which one do you pick? And if you guys are ready to answer some questions, uh, looks like some people are recording this already for our behind the scenes feature. At, uh, that's great, thank you. Uh, we or our court to... trial, whichever one comes first. Thank you guys. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so <laughs> our first question is from Pinata Time, so I'll just drag them in. All right. Oh, when's they accept? Hello, does it work? Hello. Hey, Pinata. Howdy. Well, first off, just thank you for making such an amazing film about such an amazing man. Honestly, just such a great thank artist. Thank you for making great animations about um, our, that amazing oh, man. I really yeah. noticed that. You don't know how much that meant when you left that comment. That's seriously just like, <laughs> uh, meant so much to me. So thank you for that. But sorry, enough thanks. <laughs> Very simple question. Obviously, I'm sure this can, uh, you know, is in flux right now, but approximately how long is the film planned to be like runtime currently it has a five hour runtime but it's planned <laughs> to be less than that yeah, <laughs> yeah so you know i would watch it i would watch it oh I yes have. as as would i yes matt Locke and i both have actually we watched the uh, the seven and a half hour cut yeah that was <laughs> the a good extended cut. The ultimate cut. That's uh, the five DVD set version. <laughs> yeah, or the uh, eight video cassette version. Uh, yeah. We're not we're not releasing that on DVD. That's that's this purely analog. Exclusive to VHS. <laughs> Exclusive and only through a, a very obscure GeoCities website. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, no, um, we'd like the film to be ultimately about two hours long. Um, so needless to say, there's going to be a lot of cutting involved. Um, getting the interviews down to a, a portion because really what we would like with this documentary, obviously, to for it to be a service to those who already know and like love Logan now, but also to introduce him to a, a new and wider audience, right? Getting a lot of people knowledgeable about who Logan is and kind of spreading the word of his music and who he was as a person. So uh, probably about a two-hour-ish runtime would be appropriate. 
That sounds good. I mean, that's what bonus features are for, too. You can leave the extended interviews. Exactly, exactly. And there, there are and quite I, a few. I'll say, yeah. so happy. I missed it the first time, and I was kicking myself. So I'm so happy you uh, opened up uh, for money again, because I really wanted that DVD, <laughs> specifically. And we really wanted your money, too. So yeah, <laughs> it, all, it all worked out. Everyone's happy. Thank you, Pinata. Really, I uh, really appreciate your support. And I just want to say, you know, I, I've since I've met Logan, I've worked for fan videos and stuff. And I, every time I see something that a fan's made, I'm just stoked. And I wish there was more of it. And I'm glad that you're putting some stuff out there. So keep it up, please. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you so much. I mean, uh, again, it means so much coming from you guys. Yeah. Well, awesome. Thank you so much, Pinata. We're, we're your biggest fan, Pinata. Oh my you're, goodness! Your biggest, wow. Both of us combined are your biggest fan. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> hey, let me just move you back to the audio. There we go. Uh, so I'm going to go for some chat messages. I've got two here, so one of them's a comment. So I'll go for, through both of them. Then we'll go back to another audio one. So uh, <laughs> Luna says, "I just wanted to say thank you for all your work. I'm really looking forward to seeing this movie." Thank you. I am too. <laughs> Our pleasure, Luna. Thank, thank you for thanking us. And Brandon, uh, Brandon Brown of Needle Juice has asked, has the process of making the documentary changed your perspective on Logan's life and art? Oh, that's a that's a good one. That's a that's a that's a deep one. I'll I'll um, take this one first yeah. since I've known him longer. Um, I since the moment I first his first heard his first album that he handed me on a cassette tape have just worshipped the guy and it was hard not to and be his friend, <clears throat> but um, I always sort of knew how special he was and it frustrated me so much that I couldn't that he couldn't get out to more people especially before he passed. Um, so what this documentary has done for me it's been so hard for the family to even talk about this. And it took this long for them to really be able to open up and think about it again. Um, and the, the most important part of this documentary f on my end was seeing the kind of um, catharsis that that provided. Um, his sister afterwards, you know, she was really hesitant to talk about it. Um, but she finally agreed um, after a couple other family members had said that they had a good experience talking about it. And she afterwards said it was really good therapy for her. And that, I think, was the highlight of the entire trip for me, was knowing that there's some sort of the process of grieving and of re-experiencing these moments yeah. and thinking about them has hopefully helped. Um, and they're a lot more communicative. They're very supportive of the project. I mm -hmm. love seeing that they trust us and that they like what we're doing. And hopefully this they'll be able to watch this um, more than just once in their life after we make it. Yeah, exactly. No, I, I I wholly agree with with what Matlock's saying. Really, it's it's the perspective on Logan. For me, hasn't changed much either. I I mean, it's it's great as a diehard fan to learn more stuff about him and to get these anecdotes that you know otherwise never would have known. But it's I I think the most fascinating part in particular was just seeing talking to you know his family, friends, fans about him and his music and what he meant to them um in particular because a lot of people like who were like matlock um and other people around his age you know, were very young right i mean these were people a lot of his friends were you know people in their 20s 17 18 yeah he was yeah like and and he i mean that it's that point in your life where you you uh a lot of things influence the person that you become and with Logan, you could you could tell that it was especially true with the people that we spoke with. Like they all were very much the people they were because of Logan. They were all very different people. Every uh, you know, everyone we talked to was was very very awesome and unique. But you could tell that having Logan in their lives definitely affected you know the, who they became after everything was said and done. So I, I think yeah, if anything. Um, my perspective was probably just widened on Logan as far as his his impact on other people, right? Because as as a kid, as a twelve year old kid sitting on a computer listening to his music, you know, you, you have your own take on like what this person means to you. But to see what the actual individual meant to all these people really was enlightening. 
Yeah, there was like an undeniable, everyone who spoke about him spoke about him as though he was exceptional to everyone else they'd ever met. And mm -hmm. I think that was just true knowing him. You're like, how can someone like this exist? It's like a perfect example of a human being, like what we're capable of. He's so friendly, nice, and he's so talented. And it was just like he was in an, another level than most other human beings we'd encountered before. Everyone agreed pretty much. <laughs> Sarah, Sarah Sanger, um, Josh Staples' girlfriend from the Velvet Team, uh, she was on tour with him and she had a very unique perspective of him when he was cranky. And she was very uh, uh, adamant that she wanted to make sure he wasn't just represented like some godlike figure by everyone, yeah. you know, and that he was understood as a human being and those qualities of him were expressed. Because looking back on someone who's passed, you obviously want to emphasize the positive. And it, it's hard to think of a negative interaction I ever had with him, but she got to see a different side of him while they were on tour. Um, and it was great to have that perspective and also have her keep the interview in check kind of yeah, with that. Very good. Yeah. yeah. So I'm going to go back to the audio questions and the first, the next person on the list is Haley. So I'm going to send you an invite. Hey, Haley. Uh, Haley's not in yet. Oh, there we go. Uh, hello? hello. Hello. Howdy, howdy. Uh, can you hear me? Sure can. I think so, unless Perfect. I'm hearing voices again. It's got to be. Uh, <laughs> uh, first, I want to say that uh, I'm really happy with the, you know, everything you guys have been doing, and I'm really excited to like, I don't, I haven't been able to yet, but as soon as I can, I really want to, I don't know, just back this and help the project general yeah you get what i mean though like no, no idea. you want to give us money yeah. that's great <laughs> yeah i love giving money appreciate almost it. as much as i love receiving money oh yes. uh but yes my question is you know what uh i'll use the one i typed out uh do you, is there any plans to like well actually is it okay if it's like general questions or does it have to be specifically about your friend logan i mean sorry if it, that's a. Uh, Okay, that's yes. still about Logan. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'll to ask: Would you ever consider doing like a second volume of Miss Lo Loganess? If that's how you say I it, I would. I, you know, I heard the songs that didn't make it on, and I there were a couple favorites of mine that are awful Ooh. songs, but they're great <laughs> because of that. Like, oh, did yeah. the crappy did the the crappy dappy song made it on? Right? Yeah, it did. It did indeed. Uh, um, that was our compromise for uh, for G Man, which I think you guys could find. G Man was the one I was pushing because it's like I, yeah, I was pushing too. Long, and he's just like doing awful harmonies and then criticizing himself the whole but, um, time. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, it's, like, it's hilarious. Um, definitely one of my favorites for sure too. But uh, basically, yeah, the process we did for Mr. Loganus one was we did the compilation for the Kickstarter. Um, it was me, Matt Locke, and Josh Staples um, who, who put together like the track list. And uh, I, it was a lot. It was a lot of back and forth thing actually. It was because like you know, uh, especially for the. Um, the, I like the crappy dappy song. I, I think Josh was was like that was our compromise for not getting G Man on, which Josh was like, we are not doing G Man. Yeah. I was like, all right, well, if we're not doing G Man, we gotta do crappy dappy. <laughs> Some like, of my favorite stuff is Logan's roughest stuff, where he's just messing yeah. around. And so even when I knew him and he was talking about like upping his production quality, I was like, yeah, yeah, that's great. But you still got to do some like really like lo-fi <laughs> stuff, right? Like keep it, <laughs> keep something lo-fi. Cause I really, some of his older albums and just where it sounds like he's playing around in his room. Like those are my favorite songs. But um, Yeah, no, I, I agree. Outsmart and Popos and Octopus have like some real like, Great moments on them because they're so um, because of the production powerful. quality. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Very much I, like like I like older kind of Happy stuff. Noodles. Like I, yeah. I obviously the Goodbye My Fur Tracks, the ultimate Happy Noodle version. But there's like three other versions. Uh, like two, sorry, I'm so sorry. So to answer your question, Haley, um, the, the volume two that would depend on if we we're able to kind of organize with Josh Staples again to do a second uh, album. So that okay. that. That is TBD at the moment, but if we're able to kind of organize that on our end, we would love to do the second volume. It would just take uh, take some organizing. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Now, no matter what happens, though, you know, I guess we should be thankful for the volume that we did get. Uh, there, there are some there are some great tracks on that one. I love um, the Nowhere Man cover. 
That's yeah, it. a fucking good one. Uh, okay. Wait, can I swear? Happiness has always been a favorite of mine. Cool. Fuck. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> had to get that. What? What did you yeah. say? <laughs> I can't believe my ears. This user has been banned. Get out of my head. Ah, <laughs> uh, but no. Thank you so much, Shelly. I appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, you guys have a great day, and I guess I'll. Uh, yeah, of too. course, I'll still be listening and stuff or commenting, whatever. But yeah, yeah. you guys, continue having a good Q and A. <laughs> yeah, you too. Thank you. Um, also, just a note. Uh, hopefully, some people can make it into the Discord server that uh, is a reward on the Indiegogo because uh, Connor told me that he's going to do some live editing. So you'll be getting, you know, a, a sneak peek at, at the finished product. And that's true. That's true. That sounds and, cool and to me. Yeah, and, that, and that's another place that, like, for deleted scenes and stuff, like, for just little places that you're going to catch if it's the movie that you wouldn't catch anywhere else. Plus, there's there's a lot of Logan archival material that we've gathered over the last few years, and it'd be cool to kind of share some of it into like a, a semi private platform. Like, if you if I would say if you're a diehard Logan fan, that there, there's going to be some interesting stuff in there for sure, for sure. Uh, well, this next question, actually, this is a text one, uh, ties into deleted scenes. It's from oh. TV, and it is, any things you will already regret cutting? Like waking up in the dead of night, unable to sleep with guilt regrets. <sighs> I, I have regrets, and Connor, I know why he's done the cuts, but it's like we, it's, when we filmed them, it was like, oh, this is gold, but I, now it's like, damn, it's a, it's a shame it's not going to make it in. Um, I have so, zero regrets. Okay, yeah, no, he, that's why I'm glad nothing. he's, he's cutting this, like, when I edit, I'm so precious about stuff. I am an editing sociopath. Being, yeah, so I'm glad he's, he's doing it, because I, I don't want to look, you know? Um, well, yeah, the way, the way, <laughs> The way the way I edit is, you know, especially right now where we're at, the biggest priority is is getting it down to a digestible length. And so I'm I'm at the point where it's like, you know, the motto of cut your precious is kind of thing. Um, there there are some Please. really good stories. There there's I think it's there's an editing term I heard from like Morgan Spurlock when he was editing some of his documentaries, um, cul de sacs, right? Then these are the stories that are like, you know, they're really nice. It's kind of like a nice. Nice little thing, but you know, you circle around it and you're you, you don't really go anywhere. You're right back to where you started. And some cul-de-sacs have really nice houses, like really pretty cul-de-sacs. And at the end of the day, you have to prioritize, you know, like getting the story told over, over some anywhere. of the nicest ones. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, I I don't like when I cut something, you know, I always put it in like a little uh especially like if I really do like it, I put like a little outtakes project uh a little own separate folder. So if uh, if I do wake up in the middle of the night screaming, why didn't I put in that story? Then I can just put it right back in and then realize that was a terrible idea and then cut it back out again. But um, <laughs> so, yeah, no, I am. Um, uh, as of yet, there's nothing that I regret cutting. I think once we get like below the four hour mark, it's going to get real hard for sure. I just want to say there's we we filmed a man who's taught his son. Uh, he was a big Logan fan. He taught his son a, and has raised his son on a lot of the Logan songs, and we recorded them singing, uh, his son singing along. They both just sang a cappella. Oh my God, I'm on fire! And what was the other song they sang? But it's it seems Audubon like Audubon Society. Yeah, Audubon Society, and it was so cute. And when we were filming it, we're like, "Oh my gosh, this is so precious. This has got to go in. It's gold." And now it's like, "Nope, <laughs> that's a shame. <laughs> no room. Uh, maybe under the credits or something. Who knows?" Yeah. Deleted well, maybe scene. for the Discord server. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe mm -hmm. just yeah, maybe you can just play all the stuff in your deleted folder for everybody on the Discord. Yeah, in the DVD menus. Yeah, there'll be a little Easter egg there. Get the, um, oh man, we gotta do Easter eggs for the DVD. I I love like those old like 2005 DVDs when they would hide Easter eggs in the menu and like actually make it fun. Yeah, to do something like that. I I wish they'd just transfer that to Netflix. Like make a menu screen for whatever you're watching, and then have Easter eggs on the menu screen, and then watch what you're watching. Deleted scenes Beautiful. and all that good stuff. I, I am so DVD. sorry, I caused a huge one. I I, I completely yeah, cut you no off. No problem. <laughs> Um, so we have another audio um, request. This is Pokeballers Prime. So I'll just drag them in. Oh, hello. Here we are. Oh, hey, what's up? Hi. Hey, how's it going? How's it going? Well, I'm pretty good. I got some, I got questions for you. Oh, um, well, I hope I got enough answers. In my he was pocket. pointing at you, not me. So you, you go for it. 
I was like pointing my two fingers in two separate ways at both of Wait, them. Wait, Matlock, how many inches have you got in your pocket? I, I only have like two. <laughs> Just, uh, I, I didn't bring any today. I'm sorry. Give me all your answers. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right. You got answers here? All right. All right. Number one's a bit of a weird one. Um, do you think you can use like your magical connection powers to get uh, the secret band on like streaming and Bandcamp? Because I really like that album. The magical or at least, powers. Like, ask Judo about it. <laughs> you got the, your you got your connections. That the connections, absolutely. You know your people. I fucking we, love a uh, special little devil. We probably could. I I I've emailed Judah a couple times recently. I haven't gotten much response back. Um, but I know they've been busy with their own stuff. They had that tour last year. Um, yeah, I caught them at the last show. That was awesome. Hell yeah, yeah. I caught them at um, where were they playing? I think it was Chapel Hill. Or not technically Chapel Hill, but it was basically Chapel Hill. It, yeah, it was. They did a great show. But um, I'll I'll see I'll see what what the what the wizards that I keep in my basement can do. Nice. Yeah, Madison Avenue is like one of Logan's best, and it really more is. people need to hear it. Very very Randy Newman. Yeah. You've heard the Secret Band, haven't you, Melok? Yeah, I've actually been listening to their album. I just, uh, I've, I'd kind of forgotten about it because he handed me a tape a long time ago and I lost it probably. So, um, but I found it on YouTube and I, I was listening to those. I'm going to see if I can download those and, and put them in my library. My... I got a, I got an MP3 free 20 download if you want me to send it over. <laughs> oh, yeah. 320. 320. <laughs> I think I, I don't. Actually, I don't I, believe you got three twenties of that secret band. That's nah. I think I actually. I don't paid, know. I paid for. Or let's see. I, I'm checking my iTunes right now to see if I do have it. Yeah, I. I don't know where these came from. They're just in the Velvet Team like archive server. Um, yeah. The fan no, server. I, that, that server is is very nifty. Like those guys. Yeah, a lot of cool in. stuff in there. Exactly. We covered a lot of stuff that I didn't even know existed. So that's yeah. Here's amazing. the here's the tunnel thing. Yeah, no, these are these are cool. I'm assuming because these are probably from like mp3.com. So like, I think the it might not be free. Have... I think. Oh wait, no, mp3 192. I'm wrong. I'm wrong. What, 190 was it 192? Did they go up that high or was it one? Oh yeah, yeah. Here's this downloads will said it's 192. All right, I'll yeah, that I'll album is amazing. Um, and then what was my other question? Oh yeah, um, Logan's like like electrostatic motor and Earth is big are the big ones, but uh. Do you know if those are like recoverable and lossless in like any sort of way? I, I don't know I, the status on those. Honestly, I, I have no idea. We we no clue. We, we worked with the family to try and uncover as much as we could. Um like I my assumption would be that those were probably on an old Mac that Logan had in like ninety nine to two thousand one to two ish. Because the hard drive we we pulled from stuff was was a little later. I guess sort of like the most of Mr. Logan's stuff was sourced from a uh, from this hard drive. Um, I yeah, we we talked about that, and I, I we couldn't really find much higher quality. Uh, so I, I I would not put my hopes up for a a lossless or this big electrostatic motor. It'd be very cool if it does exist. Like if it turns it up one day. That would be amazing. Um, otherwise, I'm just going to wait until AI progresses to the point where it can add, <laughs> add bits into uh, into music. I'm like, why doesn't it do that yet? I think they like, seriously. Are. I think people are working on it. Voices, yeah. Yeah, if they if they get to that point, that's the first thing I'm doing. I'm upscaling all my Logan stuff. I mean, we're, actually, that's what we're doing for the documentary. We're, we're upscaling certain footage just because everything. Everything Logan is in low quality, right? Because the highest they had back then was for anything digital, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like the full arenes. Yeah, for so- <laughs> <laughs> okay, the full arenes that that's like that's like eight bit. But <laughs> we have high quality pictures of them now. We got high quality I, ones. Well, I saw congratulations. I've been congratulations. I've been slowly leaking those out. Yeah, congratulations. That that was much needed. <laughs> I needed to see Ryan and Clint's like youthful pubescent faces. In full definition, in a whole CD <laughs> film scan quality. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Thank you for doing that. Yeah. Number one, Fullerene's fan. Absolutely, that's me. No, no. There's got to be one other. <laughs> that's me. We're in a fight. 
Oh, oh, oh. we're gonna we're gonna throw it out. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, didn't, did I think I've probably questions? asked my I've asked my questions. It's someone else's turn. Um, I'll just drag you. I'll see you later. See you we'll later. See Thanks. Ya. We'll see you online. Okay, so I've now got another comment in the chat, which is from Charleston, and it's I'm familiar. Uh, I'm unfamiliar with Logan's work, but here it talks about overtime in the server. What songs would you recommend uh, I listen to in order to ease myself into his work? What do you think, Melog? I come from an opposite end of the spectrum of most people. I was introduced to Logan at a very lo-fi, like the beginnings. Like I started with, um, I think he handed me out Smart and the Popos and Electrostatic Motor on a cassette tape. And I fell in love with the lo-fi quality, with the do-it-yourself kind of attitude and the just messing around. Um, kind of feel of it felt like being in a room with someone who was having fun with instruments and i liked that feeling that i got from listening to those so i and i've listened to them so many times before he put out earth is big and everything else that i sort of that's where i fell in love and so everything else the more produced stuff for whatever reason it's not a turn off but it's just it doesn't have the same appeal as those early albums Alex Martin the Pope was not the best. Like I wouldn't introduce myself from the very start. I'd maybe go back to that one, but Electrostatic Motor and um, and uh, I would be a biggest octopus is where I would start someone. But most people will say goodbye my four track and it is like him at the height of his production quality. So it's really up to you. Either way is a good introduction, but make your way back to those albums at least at some point. Yeah. No, there's uh, Matt Locke is completely wrong. There's only one way to introduce yourself See? to Logan, and that's listening to Goodbye My Four Track. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, actually, I mean, and that's it, it depends on your music taste, right? And like, I, I would say, like, it, it is kind of like trying to get into weed in that way because, you know, it, most people, like, you know, you had the whole brown era, and then you got like the higher production, and most people, like, I went into. Uh, Ween and Logan similarly in that like with Logan my first track the first track I remember really being drawn to was your brain fell out and I, I think that's the case with a lot of people um, uh, yeah so I would highly recommend Goodbye My Four track as a starting point and then kind of yeah working your way backwards from there um, like you know you, you, the uh, the lo-fi stuff is amazing like it's really really fun and great um, but I think it's it's even better to appreciate it when you hear the evolution of just how his production evolved from, like, you know, a, playing around with a four track to, like, some really complicated techniques, like, really early, like, lo-fi digital stuff that, like, people, like, weren't doing back then, which, which is incredible. That's what was fascinating to me. But, yeah, I'm biased. Connor's right. Start with Goodbye My Four Track. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Um, Good question though. Thank you. Yeah, which which album did you start with uh Acosta Uh good I'm gonna get you involved. Track, actually. Yeah. I'm still the way through, but the only ones I actually own are goodbye my four track and mini album of love. Oh hell yeah. M mini album of love is so underrated too. Like that's it's one of my favorites. Yeah. So I'm many awesome tracks. TV. Hell yeah, hell yeah. You're gonna get the vinyl? Uh I I mainly collect CDs, so Oh, fair enough. We'll fair see. enough. C um, CDs are a much more affordable hobby than vinyl. And a lot smaller. Yes. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I've moved, I've yeah. moved my vinyl collection so many times, I'm like, why? Yeah. Um, <laughs> so our next question comes in from Luna, who I will invite into the call now. <gasps> Hello, Luna. Here we are. Hi. Can you hear me? I can hear you. I, I can. Alright, uh, first of all, I want to say Goodbye My 4-Track is the best starting point. Yeah! Um, See? Alright. I'm, I'm, I'm not voted. voted. <laughs> uh, and then also, uh, I bought Mini Album of Love on CD, and I kept playing it in the car when I was with my mom, and she mm -hmm. absolutely loves um, <laughs> Covered in Fish. She always Covered quotes it. <laughs> Covered in Fish. <laughs> <laughs> Covering snakes, yeah, that's um, a great one. But I, my question is actually, um, what do you think Logan's legacy will be, and what do you want it to be? 
What are you hoping to achieve with this movie? World domination, for one. I think Logan should be worshipped, and there should be statues of him in every town in America and and the world. I think. Yeah, Um, we're going to work our way Uh, to the edge of the. Wait, there are other countries? (laughs) I mean, uh, it depends. Look, there's only one country, okay? And it's the solar system. It's Logan Land. Yes. The world will be be renamed Logan Land. Ah, yes. One but, uh, one nation under Logan. Yeah, no, my well, my answer would be um, obviously I've been trying to get Logan out to the world ever since I met the guy, and um, I pushed him really hard to like keep sending stuff to Doctor Demento, and um, I couldn't think of any other at the time. There was this pretty much radio, and there was top forty stations, and you know, not much else. Like he didn't fit into any specific genre, just like we and can't like most of their songs don't really appear, you know, or didn't yeah. at the time. Um, they maybe had one or two breakout songs. And the, the one breakout song I thought he had was, um, Oh boy, a paranoia. paranoia. Yeah. And I was like, paranoia could maybe play on like a top, not a top 40 station, but an indie rock station, maybe, or he could slide in somewhere, but it was so hard to pigeonhole the guy. And, you know, because it's technically novelty music, it's like Dr. Demento was the only outlet. So luckily now, I mean, unfortunately, now that he's passed, it's like there's all these outlets and all these different niches that he could fit into and really gain a following. And so my goal it's, is, has always been to get more people to experience him because I really feel like he transcended a lot of, and, and a lot of musical evolution could come from studying what he was doing, so. Yeah. I think that's lovely. I think legacy wise, I mean, yeah, start, starting out this project as a as a teenager super fan of him, you know, uh, obviously it was basically doc, the documentary was an excuse for me to just like do a crap ton of research and and basically make myself feel productive. <laughs> um, and and it's paid off for sure. like it's it's been hugely amazing to see this come together. And I think ultimately, Logan's legacy, I, I think, I hope, you know, like getting his legacy out there will be one of, of creativity and joy. Um, just, again, talking with people about him, like you can tell like his, his very DIY method of, of, just, of just making stuff. Like he was a guy who would just sit down every day and write a song, you know? you know, whether it was good, whether it was bad, he would just sit down and do it. And that's how he got better. And that's how he got like to the point where, you know, he was making stuff like about my four track because he was just doing it every day and just letting himself have fun. Um, and I think, I think uh, that's, that's something that needs to be shared right now is just like bringing the joy back into creativity. And I think Logan is the, the epitome of that. Um, not to mention again, the, the joy and just the the niceness he brought into the world um i mean th- those are huge as well and i think yeah yeah i think logan logan's legacy has been and with this documentary will continue to be nothing but positive and can you imagine what he would be doing right now with the technology that existed like he was already using garage band i think for um, very tiny songs and it's like he, he. A lot of people say he would have been an influencer at this point. He, you know, it, just it'd be uh, he'd be unstoppable with the technology at his fingertips nowadays. L- Logan's yeah. music, I think, is perfectly suited to you know the internet age. And exactly. Yeah. He just so narrowly missed it. Yeah, I know. It's so I, disappointing. I, the the way, the strange thing about it is that he. I mean, he pretty much directly inspired it, though. I mean, the the, the music, the internet age, and the internet music. I mean. Logan was what Jason well, Sariga Sariga were listening to, like Film Cow. There wouldn't have been a Charlie the Unicorn without Logan, right? It, it's yeah. it's a direct link to him, and I I think he's directly influenced the music and the kind of culture that's kind of come around from the internet. So it, it's it's yeah, it's incredible. I was just reminded of a quote that I think made it into the documentary that Owen made about how a lot of people I forget the term he used, but um people who feel they need to buy new equipment before they can make stuff. Oh, yeah. And they, uh, I'm not sure if you remember the quote any better than audio, I do. Audio acquisition syndrome. Audio ac- like yeah, equipment audio acquisition. acquisition. Yeah, gas, so gas, people gear, feeling like they have to keep buying. Yeah, there yeah. you go. 
and that's that Logan, yes. Logan yeah. just grabbed what was around. I remember him telling me that he used his ramen pot for, oh my God, I'm on fire. And I was like, I that's perfect. Yeah. I have a ramen pot right here. You oh can play, God. oh my God, I'm on fire all by yourself. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Well, very cool. What, um, right, you thank you so much. Something? Thank oh, you. Yeah. yeah, no, I'd give, give, uh, give someone else a go. <laughs> all, right. all right. Nice to meet you, Luna. Thank you. You too. Um, so the next question I've got, um, is from Brady and it is, do you think there'll be a soundtrack compilation for the album, uh, for the film? My, sorry. I saw that. That's a great question. Uh, what do you think, Connor? That would be very, very cool. I, I, we haven't really planned on it as of yet. Um, but like if that's something that we're able to work on this summer, that would that would be nice. I wouldn't say no to it. It would just involve just kind of compiling everything, getting the rights, because it would probably include like Logan's music, but also some Velvet Teen stuff, and getting the higher quality ends. Like if if you're gonna do like a vinyl press or something, would be would be paramount. So, if we if we get the rights to something that somebody else made, then yeah, like we'd have to think about how to include yeah. that and figure I mean, that out. It'd probably be yeah, mostly Logan, Velveteen, and Littleton Frog would be the big ones, and maybe a secret band track here or there. Yeah, um, that would be a cool starter album though to to give people. <laughs> It'd yeah, be a yeah. best of pretty much. Best of Logan, the best of. I'd buy it. I would too, probably. Um, I might. I don't know. You think about it. You're, you're I, probably I sick of Logan. I after, contemplate it. After a lifetime of wanting to make this documentary and four years of actively making it, you've got to be tired <laughs> of Logan at this point. No, honestly, like, it, it's, 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 uh, it's just made me, like, learn to appreciate him as a person like, all the more, and, like, his music as well. Like, just, it's, yeah, it's fantastic. That's my question for you, Connor. How do you how do you make it through a process like this? How, what keeps you going? What what um, what keeps you working through the night? Well, I uh, I blast punk music, just 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 straight up like like hair metal, anything other than Logan, just to get me through the day. <laughs> just so anything, the edit, anything but Logan. The God. edit's like really chaotic, and there's just a lot of like really hard cuts in the edit, and we're like, "Wow, this just doesn't fit the tone of his music." And it's because you're editing to. I listened out. to seven hours of drone, just <laughs> so I didn't have to listen to the thirty second Fish catalog improvisation number twelve again for the hundredth time, or was it number three? Which one was it? What's oh boy, number? you should know this. I know. Someone, someone, tell me, please. And I will say, I'll give you a thank you. It's number one. Like, it's not number one. Why'd you say five? Because We can take more questions. We're just... Yeah, we're I'm going to well, look this up um, on Spotify while people... It's yeah. Fish Catalog Improvisation. It is number one? Oh, my God. Ah. Ah! Dude, dude I'm you're, so you're fired. I'm, you're, I'm, the, I'm the producer. You're fired. I'm so oh my God. <laughs> you saw it all. You heard me say it. He's fired. Take this, Take this out of the recording. Take this out of the recording. So we have one more question currently, and that is from Haley, who was in the call earlier. Hey. So I'm going to bring them in now. Oh, right. Welcome Howdy. Back. I was in the call earlier. Howdy, oh, Haley. Not. Howdy. Uh, first, less of a question. I want to say uh, long live the Fullerines. Hell yeah. Yeah. Because we mentioned it earlier, but. Come back. Up back. Again. Yeah. So we're, we're having a three way fight for uh, dominance as the number one for Lurines fan later on, I guess. It is pay per view uh, tonight at midnight on the Ooh. playground. Meet me there. It's in the Logan. Will there be a stream going on in the Your Friend Logan, Logan Discord? Yes. Absolutely. Hell yeah. Fundraising tears. That's how you get your it is. This is the one that fundraising tears is, is the, uh, the, the pay per view wrestling match. A thousand dollars. See the uh, let the wrestling match come to fruition and get all like the the sh the shipping or planes and whatever yeah. limousines, etc. You we'll, know, the we'll, all, stuff. we'll all be shipped to North Dakota in boxes. <laughs> Hell yeah! Uh, my 
first question is sorry. My first question is a bit from earlier because of our, uh, it being mentioned earlier. Uh, what sort of like what upscaling and stuff will you guys be doing for some of the lower res footage? I'm I'm quite interested by that. So we have a copy of uh, Topaz Video Enhanced AI. Um, and we'll be using that on, and basically uh, the clips that we'll be showing that are sourced from lower quality. Um, I, I've been experimenting with it on certain clips and, you know, it depends on the clip, obviously, right? Like if you yeah. use a lot on a certain clip, it looks really bad. If you use too little, there's no point. Um, so it's kind of about having that, finding that happy medium, but um, I mean, it's it's given us pretty pretty decent results. Um, there's a clip in the trailer that was sourced from from Albert Albert Peter gave us some footage of uh, the 2003 memorial. No the memorial. Uh, memorial, yeah, but also the concert, the album release concert for Goodbye Four Track. Oh yeah, and but he he recorded it basically on like a brick like camera. And like in order to film it, he had to like like dumb it down to like 140p kind of thing. Like it's just awful quality. But it's Logan; and he's on stage, and so that that clip that you see of him like dancing for like two seconds, doing the robot from that. Yeah, doing the Ooh. not the the robot, but him um, uh, air guitaring for Robot Cat. Um, it's uh, it, it's sourced from that, and that that looks that looks decent enough. Again, it's low quality. Like that's extremely low quality. But um, I think I think you I think it works for that one. Sounds dang. I don't know. Now I now I, now I gotta look back because <laughs> I don't. I'm very That's one of those we're talking about. Now you know. And uh, my second question: This is about the bonus features. More of I guess a question of I think I mentioned it before, but I haven't like. Asked it as a question here. Would you guys ever consider including the uh, happy noodle versus sad noodle music video as like a bonus feature or something? Because if he's, uh, I don't know, if you're already getting the guy yeah. who made that animation to, you know, do the other animations, I guess you could always kind of ask. I don't yeah, know. that'd be cool. If you guys wanted yeah. the bonus features, we can definitely ask Brian. Um, he'll yeah. be doing some. I don't see why not. <laughs> Absolutely. He, he'd be doing some video. original animations for. Uh, for certain sections of the documentary, and that's going to be yeah. exciting. We we met up with Ryan in uh, in Portland, yeah, in Portland, Portland. Mm -hmm. and yeah, he's a very cool guy, very cool guy. So we're we're very excited to uh, work with him. Yeah, I'm sure he's excited to finally start working with us too, because we've been we've been bugging him for two years, and we haven't had anything for him to animate. I know. <laughs> because yeah. we've had to finish the edit first. We keep he's we like, keep oh, you guys are still it. doing that. We're like, yeah, yeah, we are. Yeah, well, now yeah. you got the entry is at least, so you can, I guess. Well, actually, you know what? That does. Uh, how much? I uh, started to ask a third question, but like, how much of the film is like, is there like a sort of like script or something being based off the interview? Like, how? How does? I don't script? know. Like, I I get what you're asking. I don't it's know. Mainly, oh, it's mainly God. interviews. It's it's how mainly you... all just the interviews okay. telling the story. Uh, Connor. Right. Opted for a non-narrative, like not uh, not narrative, but uh, narrated uh, yeah. documentary style, which I think works perfectly because everybody pretty much has you know different you know a Rashomon perspective on different stories, and they can all tell it in yeah. in sequence, and it all works that way. So yeah, you might overhear Connor asking a question or two in a in a in a clip or whatever, but uh, don't worry, you won't yeah. have to hear his voice for long or, or very yes. loud. Trying to keep it very uh, brief. Uh, Sometimes that helps, like the you know. Oh, with Connor, it's most of the time. But yeah. <laughs> believe me, when uh, you hear my voice, it's uh, it only does harm. Yeah, people <laughs> stop watching the trailer Europe. right when you cut in. It's weird. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's when the statistics just go. <laughs> <laughs> it's like yeah. you, you hover over the task bar, and you can like see like you know how like it has the uh, oh this is the top moment in the video. You just yeah, see like exactly, that instantly. Yep. Depth. It drops <laughs> just zero. It goes below zero. Yes, people. I'm gonna have to put the Photoshop Matlock's face onto me for the new cut. I'll yeah, that's. I told you to do that, but he just didn't have time before the Indiegogo. It's the only way we'll be able to do this. 
Uh, thank, thank you. Thank you, Haley. Thank you. Letting me ask a question again. <laughs> of course. Thank you. Anytime. I will I will uh, take my bow. You can't see it, but I'm bowing right now. That's a nice <laughs> bow. I saw it. Bowing. Um, so we have another question, and it's from Pinata Time. And they're asking, will full concerts be included in the bonus feature? Oh, that's that would probably be a little too big for the DVD. Um, I mean, right now we don't really like, like, like I mentioned the 2003 concert, and that's definitely more of like little clips of it. It's definitely not not the entire concert whatsoever. I think, well, as far as full concerts goes, like you guys have as much as we do. Um, the two 1999 concerts that are already on YouTube, that Matrix, uh, Matrix concert, which. Somebody did a lathe cut of that, and that looks really freaking cool. I just wanted to I say think that was Poke, who's just in the chat. Yeah. Hello, Poke. You did a fan. That's fantastic. That's awesome. Brilliant. Magical. I'm, I'm seeing a couple questions pop in on this topic about the Blu-ray. Why did you decide to do DVD over Blu-ray? Well, DVD was something we we established from the get-go. Um, for the last fundraiser, we we offered DVDs, and so we decided to continue it on with this one. Um. I've been noticing a lot of people are are wanting Blu-rays, which makes sense. High definition, I like high definition too. So, uh, uh, just uh, just uh, keep keep an ear open uh, next week or so. That's all, all I'm gonna say. See what the future holds. See what the future holds. Exactly. Exactly. Get your crystal balls out, kids. You can't Time see, but the future. both his eyes are twitching right now. Um, I think he's trying to wink. No, it's just my allergies. I'm I'm really getting hit hard this spring. Uh, should we uh, mention uh, international pricing? Um, since I know we have a couple people, I don't know if they're here in the in the voice chat, but um, one of them. Uh, yeah, <laughs> there we go. Austin Hughesman is one of them. Yep. Uh, we're figuring that out at the moment. I, Monday we'll have the international quotes. Matt Lux just got to run to the post office. We got to confirm some things. But we'll have uh, we'll get some international shipping for you international folks. We're you, looking for shipping that's under a hundred and twenty dollars. So in your international uh, hearts. I, I don't know why. A DVD. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why it's so expensive to ship it to your house, but I, I blame you. Pirate ship. What is pirate ship rates? Oh yeah, pirate ship. I've heard some good stuff about them. I was looking at that earlier. I wasn't sure if you need a membership with them. It looked like it was only um, it wasn't international, but I'm probably wrong. I just glanced at the page. Yeah, Poke probably knows better than I do. That's for sure. Um, Poke uses it for um, things like fullerines and the blowing. Cool. Okay, All right. nice. I'll check nice. that out. Thank you, Poke. Yeah, thank you, Poke. Yeah. Uh, and then the add-ons we did add, uh, add if nobody knew yet did add-ons for um, a lot of the uh, rewards so people don't have to uh, necessarily, I, I don't know, how does it work, Connor? People don't have to get all the other stuff they already own, they can just yeah, get yeah. the... So, and I, I saw an announcement about this earlier, so I'm assuming you guys are all aware. I was, I goofed, I didn't add add-ons, and then I was like, oh wait, I should probably add add-ons. And so now you can get the records, the pre-orders for Goodbye My 4-Track and the Mini-Album of Love at any of the tiers underneath the record tiers. So if you guys want to get some pre-orders, I know I definitely do. You can you can go ahead and donate at any uh, any tier and add on the, those record pre-orders to your order. Yeah. Yeah. Yar. Yeah. Yar. Yar. Any other questions for us? Yeah. Any I more yars? I got nothing better to do. I got all night. I don't know about Connor, but they could go till uh, early morning. Can go. We're going all night. I'll describe every scene of the documentary to you in sequence. Oh, there we <laughs> are. Here's another question from Sai Alola, saying, "Will there be uh, pressing slash CDs for other albums, or just Goodbye My Four Track and Mini Album of Love?" That would be um, that'd be a Needle Juice question. We we don't usually take care of the pressings. We're working with Needle Juice on the the vinyl and CD side. So that would be uh, I'm assuming for Jace or for Austin. Yeah. Uh, Pinyata Time or, also asks, Yeah, a tiny song. Oh, I mean, Matlock, you can, you can, you can see the obvious one here. Well, oh, oh, yeah, well, of course, the best one is, is My Name is Matlock, but, um, 
and the Mr. T song, which I also suggested, and I just have to be, I got two suggestions in and they were the two best songs on the album. So that's, that's my pick. <laughs> no need to show off. I well, it, where else can I show off and it'll matter to anyone? <laughs> Nobody else, <laughs> literally no one else I could talk to would care about that. Mr. T does rock indeed. Um, Brian Fernando is awesome. It's stuck in my head a lot. It is, it is, it's so simple, but it's so nice. I don't even know who Brian Fernando is, but I want, I want to know, because he's awesome. Um, nothing comes up besides random different people, also called Brian Fernando. I know, that's, <laughs> I gotta, we gotta visit all of them now, Matlock, and interview each one of them until find we find them. the one who did it. Yeah, I mean, that's, for, that's for the follow-up documentary. <laughs> this is, this is the, yeah, the, the 10-year two. retrospective. Every your 10 years, the it'll be like, Fernando. be like the 7-Up series. Just every 10 years, we'll interview all the same people. The sequel, the sequel documentary. The sequel exactly. to Logan. Who is Brian Logan Fernando? 2.0. Um, uh, yeah, so we've got another question here from Luna. And that is, can you officially declare me the biggest Australian Logan fan? Uh, I don't know. Is there anyone else from Australia who's in the chat? I mean, Poke says Australia is not real. So I don't know. Yeah. But how do I don't know. know. Real? That's true. How do you how do you know I'm real? How do I know any of this is real? Oh no! Uh oh! I'm starting to detach from reality again. No! No! Ah! Person swapping accounts this entire time. <laughs> this is all Matlock. Well, Connor's. I mean, he's legally not the biggest. He has no say in the matter. It would be me. Um, as Lo as Logan's biggest fan, and I would say, even though wait, I've never wait, been wait to a, Australia, wait a, wait even though second. I've never been to Australia, hey, hey, I declare hey, myself no, the biggest no, stop Australian. That. Stop that! Stop that! I am the, I am the biggest Logan fan, and I declare I declare a thumb Luna war. the the largest. I I declare Luna the largest Logan fan in Australia because that way they can't be the biggest Fullerines fan. So I'll allow it for today, but only for today. So yeah. I've got the um, we've got the Logan boxing match, and I've got the Logan fun war as well. Are there, yeah. any, other, are there any other perks coming? Now I'm starting to think if Logan takes over, if there's world domination, more is fighting combat. over who's the biggest Logan fan. We're adding all these. To, actually, I'm I'm adding these all to the, to the tier list tonight. Let me let me let me write this all down here. There will be like world wars waged over which country loves Logan the most. Logan War Two. <laughs> Logan War Two. Ah oh, man, arguably the worst of the Logan War. The first one was called the Great Logan War, but after the second one happened, it got renamed. I mean, yeah, I mean, you can. The sequel's never as good as the first one. Sometimes, I mean, I, I mean, I think it, it, the the more popular one is the sequel. It's a lot like Terminator Two. World War Two was was the one that we all remember. The that's most. true. That's true. Adam's Family Two. That's right. There, there, are, two. there are exceptions to the rule. Gremlins Two, the greatest movie ever made. Gremlins Two. I said I still haven't seen Gremlins One. Wow, gosh. You know, we had to show on this trip, because uh, we took a month-long trip in a car together, he and me and Sean, the cinematographer, and we, Sean and I had yeah, to Sean. we had to sit Connor down and make him watch The Princess Bride, and he watched it with his mother, who hates The Princess Bride, and so she was prepared to, like, just, like, razz it the whole time we're watching, and luckily, like, she got into it. She just didn't like that people quote it all the time, so she doesn't like it, and... <laughs> So we like watched it, and she actually enjoyed it. And Connor got to see the Princess Bride and Return to Oz for the first time on our trip. We oh, watched yeah, Return, Return to, Oz. to Oz in Kansas. We were in Kansas, and we had a projector, and we played Return to Oz on the ceiling in this little house in Kansas. It was badass. Best day of my cool. life. <laughs> and we religiously watched uh, Steve Brule um oh, like every night because oh, i had yes. never seen steve brule so me and sean would just like pull up i've seen him in eric but I, I i completely missed check it out and i'm so glad we watched check it out check it out yep check it out steve brule really he really did keep like the long days because they were they were like long long car rides and steve steve brule kept us sane we stayed in a trailer, uh, what was it, a mobile home in Alabama that was, we we did not stay there. We, we oh well, we almost stayed. left. Yeah, there was a kitten that looked like it had mange, but it was wearing a flea collar and it was really cute. It kept wandering in, and we were watching Steve Brule, and we all got ready for bed. It was a cute little 
the house, but it was Alabama. And like, as soon as we were going to bed, I looked on the floor and there was this little red bug, not little, but a red bug. Yeah. And I was like, is that a cockroach? And it was right next to Sean. And he was in the most uncomfortable cot. And he looked over and he was like, yeah, I think so. And then we turned the lights on and we saw like eight different kinds of roaches, like all in different parts of the, the trailer. Cause we turned the lights off for five minutes. So when we turned it back on, they had all come out. And so we're like, well, if there's one of each kind, that means there's like 8,000 roaches in this thing. Let's pick up all our bags and get out before they get in the bags. And then so uh, we, we slept in a hotel that night. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was a fun road trip. I almost wish we'd done a documentary just about that road trip. It was, it, it was so, it was very fun. It was well, extremely tiring, extremely exhausting, but really, really fun. 12 hour drives or 12 to 14 hour days of driving and then filming in the morning and then another 10 hour drive that same day. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's pretty crazy. Someone's going to make a documentary about you guys making the documentary. Hey, anybody in this group who wants to make it, like, I give my approval. My we got to go back and recreate the road trip. Just I do it. This. <laughs> it, it was fun. I I suggest it for anybody. Travel across this country and just sort of see all the different parts of it. It's it's pretty amazing. Um, it is. Just in contrast and as an experience, it's pretty cool. I didn't know there were so many trees on the East Coast. I'm from California, and I go over there, and nothing but trees. That's right. We went in my parents' backyard, and I'm, I'm from South Carolina originally, and so we were in my parents' backyard, which, which is a fairly wooded area. But Matlock and Sean, they're from, uh, they're from Sonoma County, and so, like, Anything that's like green over there is like is is manually done so because of the drought, and so it like they were like looking at the flowers and stuff, and like I I never thought twice about any of this, and they were like just in complete awe of all the greenery. You guys have say, fireflies. I've never seen a firefly in my life. I didn't. We do. Even, we do. We call them. We call them lightning bugs down south. But yes, oh, we do have fireflies everywhere and, on the east coast. Nothing but fireflies every night. It's like having fireflies. fireflies. You guys get fairies. We get nothing. Matt Locke's too old for the reference, like Osahedron. Don't worry. <laughs> I, I have a question from Pokeballs Prime saying, do you reckon a Logan art book would be something that could be possible? I remember I'd love that. A big I would Logan too. Art once. That would be awesome. We, we've talked about, um, when we talk about our distribution, we, we're, we're planning, like we have a plan in place of how we want to go about it. We were talking about possibly doing like a Logan art exhibit in Petaluma, right? Like, like getting that organized would be amazing. But yeah, yeah, with a so premiere. Yeah. yeah, that would be incredible to do that. And yeah, I was actually I now I've been toying with that idea of also like a your friend Logan book because that way you can it's like a like a table like a coffee table book, right? Of like seeing the art, but you also get interviews, but you get stuff that maybe we cut out that we just couldn't leave in for time's sake. And like high resolution photos, and just yeah, like Sarah Sanger took has some amazing photos of Logan. That There's would be, so much great stuff. That would be amazing. It would also be a lot of work. And right now, I'm I'm I, I'm trying to keep saying to cut down the the cut. But we'll if we're out. if if we're able to, uh, what's that? We'll worked out. A, li a little yeah. bit. Hold we're trying bit. to get this documentary done. I'm not sure if you heard, <laughs> but we're a little busy. Uh, but yeah, no, I would. Yeah. Well, by the way, um, <laughs> go to the Indiegogo. Um, so yeah, I, I would love a coffee book and that's something I would like absolutely do what I could to make happen on my end of things. Uh, uh you know, since I'm here in Sonoma County, so I'll bug Connor for you guys. Cause I'll, I'll make sure that's something I'm going to want to. <laughs> table just so I can get the book. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's worth it just for the one book. Well, what if we get, what if we have a deal with the coffee table comes with the book? A Logan coffee table. Oh, that'd be great. Like just no, no, it's like a regular coffee table. Like we just get one at Goodwill. Or something from IKEA. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. We sell it as a Logan copyright uh, table. We drive around town, uh, just find like little tables on the side of the road. All right, this will work. <laughs> Glue the book to the table. Used by Logan himself. And we ship it around. We just scratch his name into it. Yep. Well, nice. Sweet. Is there? Uh... Any other questions about the documentary, about Logan, about the Indiegogo, or anyone want to test my Fullerene's alliance? <laughs> I don't think so. I'll referee. I'm typing as soon as you say Fullerene's. <laughs> <laughs>
honestly, Poke, you would you would probably win. You you would win. Pro- a because I'm a very weak man. I'm a very very weak person. I would probably run away. I if can it attest came to this. Yes. yes, yes, and um, also it's crazy because like a lot of like the Logan knowledge and Fullerene's knowledge that I did, I did years ago, and so it's it's very it's very strange because it's almost like um like like talking about Logan now or like remembering Fullerene stuff, it's almost like remembering like an episode of SpongeBob in, in that weird way of like remembers like oh wait oh that's right that's that that song I love that it's fucking. It's it's very, very surreal. As the referee for this fight, I have to say, Connor, you have probably spoken to the Fullerines more recently and filmed them answering uh, no, your know, questions poke. more uh, often and more recently than anybody else in this category. So. Poke, poke, uh, poke had, did put out better ding through technology on CD and cassette. And has a... Uh, yeah, but and, you're making a freaking documentary, though. But not about the Fullerines, though. Yeah. I mean, well, they're in it, though. They're featured. They're in it. I know you're trying to defend me, Malik, but I I think I've talked myself down. But you're a weak man. I feel I have to defend you. (laughs) (laughs) Kind of biased for a referee, don't you think? I I have no uh, stake in any of this because I'm not as big a Full of Rains fan as any of them. So that's true. I I still have yet to listen to the full album, and that's my bad. I I that is. Better than two technology is great. Yeah, listen to it. I think I think I played it on YouTube once in the background, and I wasn't really focusing. So that's that's me. <sighs> that's just how much of a fan I am. Uh, we have a question from Pinata Time asking, sure. "What was it like meeting Weird Al?" Oh, cool. yeah, it was all right. Yeah. Next question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he is so nice you guys he Very apologized good. for being four minutes late and we were like well what did you, uh, you don't have to apologize for anything you're here so um yeah it was awesome i was starstruck um i just posted a picture of me on facebook uh how what, this big dumb grin on my face uh, <laughs> I, we took three photos and my face doesn't change in any of them it's just like ah, i'm sitting next to weird al I don't um, think I can blame you there. <laughs> oh yeah, no, I couldn't. I, I could barely. Him, like, yeah. Show. Trust me. Since we talked about getting him, I've been in my head like thinking, what if I had one question to ask him? If I had one thing to say, what would it be? And so I decided to just honor him by saying, when I first learned to play guitar, I played two of his songs, uh, uh, "You Don't Love Me Anymore" and "One More Minute" for my entire elementary school. And he was like, "Oh, that's cool." So. Yeah. Oh, he's a very, very nice guy. Um, it was, it was a lot to organize getting him on board. Uh, it, it took us about a little over a year just to organize with schedules and to coordinate with his manager, and getting him on board. Um, and we had a, a definite like like time limit with him, um, just because uh, you know he's a busy guy. He has a lot of things to do, and so his manager didn't want him to be too busy. Um, and yeah, he was just awesome. He he answered a few questions for us, mostly about uh, Doctor Demento and comedy music, because that's I mean Doctor D obviously is a huge part of this documentary, a huge part of getting Logan's music out there. And Al was able to kind of talk about we, we, we talk about the thump in the documentary, we talk about like the, the kind of like funny music that's kind of stemmed from Logan, and kind of talking about what comedy music means, whether you can classify Logan as comedy music. Kind of like shining a light on that area, and he did. He was definitely the, uh, the spokesperson for that. And uh, if people are, I, I guess, can we give away what the connection Weird Al had to Logan was? Since yeah, Doctor D talks about it is not, uh, yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say not much. You, yeah, well, you, um, he spoke with him uh, when he Logan was sick. Uh, Doctor D. He got them on the phone together, so they got to. Yeah, near the end of Logan's music. life, uh, Doctor meant to let him. Let him. Uh, him and Al had a, about a ten minute call, and so that was it. Was Doctor D's gift to uh, to Logan near the end of his life? Very, very tender moment. Yeah. Yeah. So I think. Oh, we have. Just I was about to say, but we don't have any more questions. We have a question coming in from Doctor <gasps> Worm, so I'll bring them into the call. Alrighty. There we are, Worm. Welcome to the cool. Hello, your Dr. Here. Worm. Hi, welcome to my silly little hostage situation. You guys aren't <laughs> leaving. 
<laughs> All right. Uh, oh, so, look at the time. <laughs> so my question is quick. It's not really a you guys question, but I was wondering, do you think Owen Otto would ever be down to do more Logan uh, guitar tutorials? Because I personally really enjoyed the prosthetic brain one. Yeah. I'll no, he, he would. He, I, I bet he would as well. Definitely let him know, because I, I think he'd, he'd be willing to do more. Because I know he's, he's played on several Logan tracks. Um, and yeah, the, the, the tutorial we, we did for him was really fun. It's really awesome to, uh, to kind of see him like talk about like playing the song. And he talks, a, he talked a little bit with us about like recording goodbye, my four track with Logan. And literally like, he was just like, it was so chill. Like we just figured it out on the day and we recorded something that he really liked and it was really fun. But yeah, definitely let, let Owen, uh, let Owen know, like comment on the video and stuff. Cause yeah, I'd love to see more Logan tutorials from him as well. Perfect. Thank you. And, yeah, and I saw someone yeah. commenting on whether there was sheet music for Lizard and Fish, I think, and that uh, apparently that doesn't exist. So if anybody has any musical knowledge or knows anyone with it who wants to put that Actually, out should, there into the world, I, that'd be cool. I, I did teach myself Lizard and Fish by ear a long time ago. I should probably transcribe that because that would be fantastic. If you know how. Yeah. We need a Tabs website specifically for Logan songs. The Get Logan on it. Tabs. You guys are the real fans. Get out there and make that stuff so we can link to it. We're oh, I thought, I, I'm sorry. I thought you busy. said you were the number one Logan fan, huh? Well, I'm, I'm there. I'm huh? busy. Huh? You know what, what it takes yeah. to produce That's what I thought. That's what I thought. From halfway around the country. I could play stuff. I don't know how tabs even work half the time. So. <laughs> <laughs> the tabs tabs Just are... Feed, feed them into GarageBand and then let it play it for you. Tabs are some <laughs> evil language that I'll never understand. Midi all the way. They, they it are is quite guitar medieval. is a form of torture. Designed by witches. <laughs> <laughs> well, nice. Yeah, cool. so um, I don't believe there's any other questions in the chat right now. Yeah, that's cool. You want to um, you want to wrap it up? I think, I think we, we've we've gone on for oh my god, about an hour now. Holy crap! Uh, yeah, I know. Just uh, I just want to uh, end by saying thank you for all the support that you guys have given us, and yeah. it really is great to know that there's people out there who will receive this and put it into other people's heads and hands, and um, just keep being you and 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 putting Logan out there. Share share this Indiegogo with anybody you know who has money, um, because. It start it's started strong, really strong so far. But I'm assuming everyone who was going to donate is is probably donated by now, um, a majority of them. So, uh, rich aunts and uncles, uh, grandparents who uh, <laughs> all their all their um, senses aren't there, and so they might fall for some, you know, just when your parents aren't looking, funds. take take your mom's wallet. Yeah, copy the credit card mom always has. In. Get the milk money. No, Take no, but sell your belongings. Absolutely, people, third, third have, mortgages are are normal nowadays, right? If you have the ability to hold people hostage and make them click the donate button, um, I suggest you do it because we really need that money so we can have more cartoons in our documentary. Hey, but no, it's it is like it, it's extremely reassuring to see like the mass support for for Logan and for this project. So yeah, just thank you guys like immensely because you, you you all are are very much like the core of of the people who like you know, are really going to appreciate this film and uh yeah i'm just super excited to to have you all see the finished product because it's going to be it's going to be special so appreciative and uh thank you for being here and uh be our be our army get get the word out and get this documentary as good as it can get so when we give it to you you're you're super duper happy yeah, I'm very. I, yeah, I don't think anyone's gonna be disappointed to, with uh, with how this is gonna turn out. This is it's gonna be special. Thank you, guys. Yeah. So yeah, that's uh, Sweet. that's the Q and A done. I guess. <laughs> Woo! All right, we did it. We did it. We made it through. Oh, it didn't hurt nearly as much as I thought it was going to. I felt I felt the prick at first, but I think they dropped out of the chat. Well, I feel like okay. I've been stabbed. About here, <laughs> and here, and but that's it. Um, okay. Yeah. Well, it, I, I you know, know I, now? The, the <laughs> first one, the first one was me. Um, I think the other two were Matlock. Um, I don't. I think that ration. you I think you need to get that checked out. I think the doctor needs to see that. Yeah, I think I'm, I'm probably better. There's blood everywhere now. 
Yeah, I'm that's... just holding a sharp fork, so I don't think most of it is for me. So. Could have been that. But um, yeah, thanks everyone for coming, and uh, thank you too for uh, hosting this. I suppose. Thank you for hosting yeah, Akasa for... Hadrian. You did great. Well, yeah, thank you for moderating. It's it's been uh, it's been really fun. It's been really awesome yeah. talking to you guys. I am not named after the show Pinata. That's what the song says, and it's true. It's my life story. Sorry, I just had to you shout that out. I saw it in the chat. And we fact check. Yes. <laughs> if you want to fight me about it, um, come see me on Facebook Messenger or something. If you want to fight up, fight him about it, you got to donate at the million dollar tier. <laughs> we, I will fight anybody who donates a million dollars in a <laughs> ring, like Yui Bowl. I'm the next Yui Bowl. Very nice. So, uh, yeah. Sweet. Um, Gonna end the stage now. Thanks everyone for coming. Thank you. Yeah, Thanks for having us. Y'all take care. Have a good rest of your weekend. Bye. 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 Bye.